Yep, there we go. Uh, welcome everyone. This is the IBC ecosystem call for the 13th of February, which is today. Had to look that up. Um, is there anyone new here who wants to introduce themselves? Then I'll go over the agenda. Hey guys. Hello. Hello. Hi. I'm Parth. I uh, work with Chorus One, and this is going to be my first. Um, this is going to be my first call here at the Cosmos IPC One. Welcome. Thanks for joining. Anyone else? Alrighty. Uh, so uh, quickly, uh, the only agenda item on my plate is to give a quick update on IBC implementation status for everyone. Uh, then on the issue, which is issue number 377 on the ICS repository under the Cosmos organization, uh, has only one other comment um, by B Harvest, uh, which asks if there are plans for IBC implementation on, on Hyperledger Java or EOS C++ uh, and uh, uh, says that we should have a discussion about multi-token staking for cross-chain validations. Um, I don't know too much about those, but we can definitely talk about them. Is B Harvest here? Yeah, I didn't see them. Well, um, if they join, we can talk about those. Otherwise, I can try to answer, although I'm not totally sure what the questions are. Uh, so for, and are there any items anyone would like to add to the agenda while we're discussing it? Any discussion topics, questions? We might have extra time. Looks like this is a short agenda, so feel free to bring it up now or after. I, th I think the, uh, this Dean, the, just, a minor one to add to the agenda, but one that I cared about a lot was that the fixes for 038 are into the IBC branch. So it is as good as the current uh, uh, version in terms of what should be on chain. So we're planning, we're integrating it into our testnet, so our testnet will be ready to play at least to some extent on Game of Zones. Cool. So yeah, anyone I else? Started that. All right, so IBC implementation status update. Uh, you can always find, uh, until you are told otherwise, but certainly for now, uh, the IBC implementation status at this Gaia issue 201, which is conveniently in, uh, titled the one true master IBC implementation tracking issue. Um, it's pretty unambiguous. Uh, so we are still working on uh, returning to a working demo state after a bunch of refactors. Um, you can find that checklist here under step one. That will require uh, the uh, uh, conclusion of a basic relayer, relayer implementation, which I believe Jack is working on. Uh, the, uh, a few more update. Sorry, go ahead. I'm going to give an update on the relayer in a bit, too, if you want. Yep, yep. I think someone asked for that as well. Um, just to run through the list, uh, it will also require there are a few minor updates to ICS 20 as follow-ups uh, to ADR 15. It's basically the same task. Um, a FedE uh, who's on vacation this week and I am working on those. Um, I think they're going okay. It turns out we need to uh, uh, create a new router to handle the uh, channel opening and closing handshake callbacks uh, in an ergonomic fashion. So that's a little bit of work, but it's not um, not insurmountable. It also doesn't really block the demo. We could get the demo done without that, but. Uh, that's what I'll be working on um, alongside Fede. Uh, and Aditya has been working on some follow-ups to ICS7, which is the uh, Tendermint client uh, standard and sub-package in the Cosmos SDK, mostly to clean up the abstraction boundary so that it's easy to add other types of clients in the future for other consensus algorithms or uh, what have you. Once those things are done, we should have a demo. Then there are some uh, follow-up tasks we'll, that will need to uh, be done after a working demo, but before 1.0 and before release to the Cosmos Hub, and you can find the rest of those on this issue. Any questions about that? Cool. Do you want to give an update on the relayer, Jack? 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I spent a bunch of time <clears throat> over the last couple of weeks on that. Uh, I've, if you want to go check out the latest work, I have a branch. Um, if you just check out the pull requests, um, I'll drop a link here. But that has a full list of the query <clears throat> transaction key and light client commands that are going to be included in the relayer. Um, Anton's done a lot of great work helping me out getting the light client wired up properly. So uh, local storage of trusted headers from configured chains working great. Um, most of the query functionality has begun to work pretty well. I'm currently blocked on an issue around transaction signing. Um, the key base is requiring interactive transaction signing for pretty much everything. So I'm trying to figure out a way around that right now. I've got some time with Bez later. And uh, yeah, so if anyone has any, uh, any insight on that, I think Bez is probably gonna be the best person, but uh, also might wanna sync with the Dotia too. So that's where I'm at. Um, Things are moving along well. Uh, I also have pretty much everything stubbed out at this point, at the very least, so that uh, once the implementation settles on the SDK side um, and we can move some more folks over to working on this, uh, it should go fairly quickly. Cool, thank you, Jack. Any questions about the relayer or about the implementation in general? Alrighty, let's move on to the next item on the list. Uh, so I think this is eHarvest, are you here now? Yes. Do you want to talk about uh, plans for IBC implementation on Hyperledger EOS and multi-token staking as you mentioned? Yeah, uh, so I want to introduce uh, the reason why I asked this question uh, because uh, in in many organizations in Korea, uh, they build a lot of uh, internal uh, private blockchains, which are mostly based on uh, platform technology from uh, Hyperledger and uh, EOS, and they are having some trouble connecting each other because all the blockchains have uh, different applications and uh, they don't have any uh, utility to connect uh, those blockchain each other. So they're uh, just hearing some rumors about Cosmos that they are trying to connect different blockchains. So they have a lot of uh, interest in this uh, Cosmos uh, technology, but they don't have any information or uh, knowledge. So, so they, but they are expecting that Cosmos may, might be enabling the connection between uh, different blockchains. So I think uh, in this situation, uh, connecting Hyperledger and EOS will be the most benefiting uh, connection in private blockchain world. So uh, that is, the reason why I ask this question. Um, yeah, great question. Uh, the language has, I mean, uh, IBC can be implemented in any of these languages. That's definitely not a problem. Um, is, is Hyperledger also a consensus algorithm? Does it have pluggable consensus? I'm not super familiar. Uh, I don't think it is plug pluggable. Okay, so it has a consensus. Is it like just a private chain where the quorum signs or um, something? A borough is Enderman. Yeah. So there, like I said, there isn't one hyperledger. There are many hyperledger projects. Um, some of them have different consensus algorithms. Um, ma many of them, except for borough, I'm not sure that any of them are like BFT consensus algorithms. Um, the uh, so all of those things are challenging. I, I honestly think for both of these things, both uh, um, EOS and um, 
Hyperledger, like the biggest challenges are frankly just going to be that the fact that they're not like running like actual like modern consensus algorithms. I would think that uh, that um, uh, Hyperledger at least you know could play the role of or you know could could act in the way that the the solo vat does, where it's just you know acting as a signer of transactions and such, and then running a follower. Is that yeah. Uh, not yeah, it could run the, the sort of Oracle based approach. Um, there are some other uh, sort of Oracle based interoperability platforms that have been um, uh, that have been uh, sort of uh, in the Hyperledger ecosystem as far as I've been aware of. So you, you always need two things for IBC and only two things. You need a light client algorithm for your consensus, um, and you need a you know, IBC implementation of the core specifications in your state machine. So it's you know, fairly straightforward to implement IBC in Java or C++. But then you would need to uh, you know, choose or craft a client algorithm uh, for whatever instantiation of Hyperledger you pick or for EOS. Uh, there may be like, variations on an algorithm which have different security properties and are more or less complex to implement. Based on my understanding of EOS, it is also not BFT, although maybe it's intended to be BFT. Maybe they fixed it, I don't know. Um, but uh, has some like relatively small quorum set. So you could do certainly simple sequential verification just by checking signatures, but without you know, more advanced uh, uh, guarantees like Tendermint provides, you may not be able to do something like bisexual. But I don't know. It may also be the case that, uh, you assist, that you're okay with a weaker security model if these are private chains um, and, and that you can uh, do something pretty simple. I think one of the things that represents sort of an interesting question is what is the relevance to IBC in weaker security models? Um, what what aspects of IBC are potentially useful in this sort of weaker security model world of private chains? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I, mean, I personally don't understand the use cases super well. Uh, so without that, it's tricky to contextualize. Uh, I mean, IBC is not a... Uh, uh, not expensive computationally, especially if you have a very simple light client algorithm. So if you just have different chains which are doing different things and you want to send messages between them, IBC is uh, like pretty suitable for that. Maybe the only disadvantage is that because IBC is quite general, it introduces some abstractions to handle you know, generality, which you might not need for very specific use cases. So if you want to do X between private blockchains, where X is only one very like concrete thing like atomic swap or uh, you know uh, relay state from one chain to the other but not bi-directionally or something like that IBC may be overkill it may not be worth the abstract like the cost of implementing these abstractions but if you want to do more complex things or various things IBC is good in general message passing so maybe I'll say a couple of things like IBC has like a couple of sort of core components that may or may not be relevant in a private use case. So one is um, it is designed for modern consensus algorithms and to work well with them to provide extremely sort of low trust message passing. Um, the second thing is, is it's designed for this sort of like ad hoc um, interaction um, between, uh, 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 between systems that get introduced to each other which is really the contributions of the Agoric folks. Um, the, uh, uh, and you get a lot of complexity from trying to get both of those two properties. Um, and the question for a private blockchain project um, is whether or not either of those properties are desirable. There are certainly plenty of private chains for which, you know, the, the, the properties of reliably being able to connect from a private chain to a public chain 
is desirable if it wants to be able to per, to connect to and participate in in the larger ecosystem. Um, the you know, and the, the property of sort of lightweight connectivity is that it's not that the public chain trusts this private chain, it's that some one participant on the public chain trusts this private chain. Hi, please mute if you're not speaking, thank you. Okay, I'm done, I'll mute. <laughs> not talking to you, Dean, sorry. <laughs> so, uh, well, so from, like, from context from Dean, uh, actually, some government organizations have also thoughts on connecting their private chain to some public chains also. So that's, that's the one of source of interest into customs. Right. The problem with the scheme that I described of <clears throat> having the private chain just basically signing messages um, is that um, whatever mechanism they use for consensus, you know, whether it's, you know, incentives or authority or what have you, if it's authority, then it's straightforward. But what you don't want is a node that cooperates correctly in consensus, but then equivocates and, 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 and cheats on signing the messages to talk to the outside world. Right, because they've set up whatever accountability structure, Ryan Warner pointed this out to me, and I'm sure it's sort of around in the general interop between chains things, but they, they, they set up some infrastructure to correctly reward and incentivize and punish um, uh, nodes to make sure that they act correctly in consensus. But if you then add like doing a multi-sig or something, that's in some sense bolting another consensus mechanism off on the side and um, and that mechanism on the side, they, people don't have to have to obey it because the consensus rewards and, and structure don't apply to it. And so having the counterparty chain actually really truly have a light client is still better uh, for the hyperledger or whatever it is is still better than having uh, than trying to treat the hyperledger as just doing a multi sig. And so that goes back to uh, um, Chris's comment about the question is depending on which hyperledger it is, because of course there are several different, you know, algorithms and so forth. Um, can you have a a a, um, a chain watcher that is observing that they actually did their consensus agreement rather than that they just sign, simply signed messages? We see lots of use cases that want a private chain to talk to the a public chain. The example you describe of a bank that is doing, you know, dollar-based accounts, and now they want to be able to transmit those onto a public chain is 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 one of the most frequent. Has that answered your question? Talking mostly to bee harvest here. Yeah, 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 mostly. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Uh, and then, did you want to discuss multi-token staking? I don't know precisely what you mean, but go ahead. Okay. So um, I was imagining uh, multi-token staking in one chain. Uh, for example, uh, as a Cosmos Hub. So uh, besides atoms some other tokens can be staked on uh, Cosmos Hub, or uh, whether for uh, validating uh, Cosmos Hub or whether uh, uh, to validate another chain. So um, this is the opposite um, generalization of cross-chain validation. So cross-chain validation uh, use, usually means uh, atoms uh, validating other chains, but this must take the opposite side. So uh, the other token can be staked on the hub, but this is this is going to validate uh, this hub or another chain. So this is the another direction of generalization of 
uh, cross-chain validations. So uh, one of the use case of this is that uh, there is a, a new zone, but they don't want to uh, uh, generate a new blockchain to handle all the uh, new tokens uh, ledger. So uh, the Cosmos app decide to handle all the ledger and also staking uh, utility on the hub. But this validator uh, in the hub will validate uh, the, the zone. So th this is the model uh, which is uh, described by June in GitHub, uh, but it is more expanded version because uh, the June only described about uh, 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 ledger in the hub, but I expanded this to uh, also supporting staking uh, utility for this token. Uh, so this is the uh, initial in intention of this discussion about multi-token staking. I'm not sure I, um, I explained it well. Uh, well, not entirely sure I understand. So, so the tricky bit, are, are you talking about multiple tokens being used in a proof of stake implementation for one validator set? So I, I will make a more detailed ex example. So one example is you have a atom A and atom B. Sure. Uh, or two denoms in Cosmos Hub. Uh, each mm -hmm. token has a 50% power in this blockchain. Each token has a different validator sets, also different holders. But this half and half power will in combine uh, validating the hub. So this is one use case of multi-token staking. And the other one is uh, maybe imagining uh, Kava uh, Kava has a different blockchain handling Kava's ledger and staking, but instead we we, we imagine a Kava uh, minted in in the Cosmos Hub, and uh, Kava will be staked also in the hub, but all the transactions uh, for the Kava ecosystem will be validated in Kava zone. So the Kava zone does not have a cover token, but all the uh, economic uh, transactions on the cover ecosystem will be validated by cover validator, which is staked on Cosmos Hub. Uh, yeah, 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 sure. So yeah, the thing you need to do if you're using multiple tokens in proof of stake, regardless of whether or not IBC is involved, is pick a, a mapping function to map you know, multiple denominations to some fraction of the actual validator power because ultimately you have to give the validators, you know, integer um, voting power. Uh, yes. Only one denomination the voting power can be in. Um, but subject to that, uh, this is all fine. You know, I don't really see how it relates to IBC. Like, do you need specific uh, IBC support for, for this? So. Uh, so this is also a cross-chain uh, application, cross-chain validation application, because this second e example needs uh, the, the Kava va validator set information should be transferred <coughs> to Kava blockchain so that uh, the validation uh, will be performed on, on that chain. So validator projection will be needed also here. Also reward distribution will be happening in the uh, Kava blockchain. So we need to bring back to the uh, Cosmos Hub to distribute this rewards to uh, the Kava staker on the hub. So this is uh, just another kind of uh, cross-chain validation. So we need different kinds of IBC application for this. I see. Sure. Yeah, you might modify the IBC packet slightly, or allow them to use multiple denominations or something. Should, but but uh, the bigger change is on Cosmos SDK itself, because 
the Cosmos SDK can hold only one set of validators right now. But we if we want to make it allow uh, having multi-token staking system in one blockchain, then our validator set structure should be in a list format. So we, we will have multiple validator set information. So that's a, a, a big structural change in Cosmos SDK too. I don't actually think so. Um, like the, 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 the main complexities of introducing multi-token staking to the Cosmos hub is one is you have this function that converts the different staked amounts to like one power because ultimately Tendermint just has like a consensus power. And then there needs to be some sort of logic for slashing that like figures out in what order and to what amount you apply slashes. Is it like, proportional and like it probably is just inversely proportional to the contribution of power um, um, or like proportional to the contribution of power um, when you slash like I don't think this is like necessarily hard from a design point of view to implement uh, right well I think I think what B harvest is mostly talking about also, let me know if I should say B Harvest or Hune, whichever, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> whichever you prefer. Um, is validator projection and validator projection, uh, namely storing the validator set on one blockchain and uh, sending it over IBC packets to another blockchain yep. to control that blockchain's validator set does require storing validator set in state. Um, yes. Uh, um, but that, that shouldn't be super hard. I mean, you can't use the current mechanism. The current mechanism is intended for like the local proof of stake implementation. So you'll want to create a new module which specifically deals with this probably. Maybe there's some possible abstraction to come uh, from. This is a new module. Uh, okay. Yeah, I agree that this is a new module. Mm, okay. The other thing that's tricky with multi-token staking or at least odd uh, economically is that if you pick a fixed ratio between the tokens, <laughs> But the, but the tokens themselves have like a floating exchange rate, um, mm. then you end up with it being you know, more economically uh, efficient to stake one token than the other in terms of how much validator power you get. Uh, that is mm. um, perhaps problematic. I mean, you could also, you could measure the exchange rate if you have an Oracle, like if you have, uh, you know, if there's some Uniswap zone somewhere in the Uniswap zone can provide a price oracle um, to your chain, then you can set the rate between these multi-tokens according to that price oracle. But that's also risky because then your proof of stake system is kind of dependent on this price oracle being correct. So, Or a micro-tech oracle. Right, right. But still, like you have to be very careful that the cost of corrupting the price oracle is higher than the cost of corrupting the proof of stake system anyways. Otherwise, you've just lowered your security. Yeah, so actually the, the example one is not very practical one. So I think uh, I, I don't see any uh, good use case for that, actually. But, but if you have a uh, John, uh, which is validated by its native token and also by atoms, that is very practical design. So uh, in that case, they the, the chain will have a proportion rate ratio of atoms and native token, uh, how much they have the power in total. So in that case, that parameter will be a genesis of uh, a parameter to decided by governance. So uh, that is what I imagine right now. Yeah, let's note that there are other options uh, that don't involve uh, just like picking a, a ratio between tokens or something. I mean, you could require that you know, some minimum amount of some token be deposited just to get a validator slot at all. Uh, you could have uh, like a reserve ratio that you need to keep in another token. Uh, I mean, all of these require 
economic design and careful analysis, and they may just be too complex, like it may not make sense, but um, it's also possible to do cross-chain validation without multi-chain, multi-token staking at all. You could just have your zone require like atoms. No reason why that wouldn't work. And have a native token, but the native token could do something else. It doesn't need to be used for staking. Yeah, the, the, the power distribution can be more generalized, just uh, rather than just a proportional ratio. So yeah, the, the, there's a very big uh, design of space, yeah. Right, right. I mean, the design space is not bounded. You know, message passing over IBC is equivalent in terms of its ability to convey any data to message passaging, passing on a chain. So anything you could do in a state machine on a single chain, uh, proof of stake wise, you can also do with parts of that state machine running on other chains communicating over IBC. The question is which points in the space are, have the right combination of economic, uh, you know, incentive compatibility, uh, simplicity, and ease of implementation. Yeah, I agree. Cool. Um, anything else anyone would like to discuss? Uh, that's, that's all for me, yeah. Any other uh, relayer yeah. questions? You know, this is a, the more that I've kind of dug into this piece of it, it seems like it's kind of a huge design space for building relayers. Um, has anyone else, oh, Game of Zones update. Yeah, Michelle, happy to do that. Um, but yeah, so uh, if anyone has any relayer questions, happy to sign and discuss those. Um, <clears throat> but as far as Game of Zones update, as Chris mentioned at the beginning with the implementation update, there's a few other items that we're working on right now, as well as the relayer. Um, we have the one true IBC master tracking issue. Once we complete the first set of those issues, Michelle, then we will have um, some surety on when Game of Zones. Uh, but right now we're working to complete the demo and we'll be giving updates uh, regularly. And uh, please check that issue for progress. So the, the demo is dependent on the relayer? Yes, Michelle, the demo is dependent on everything in that uh, one true IBC master tracking issue. And if you see there says part one, and that's for the demo, and anything that's not checked in there needs to be completed before we have a concrete time frame. Okay, thanks. Yeah, absolutely. Um, is there a question in chat? Uh, Mara says, I would love to hear what the main choices are that lead to such a large design space for relayers. Um, well, you know, I mean, obviously the number of different chains and, and sort of the idea that IBC needs to support different consensus mechanisms inherently forces you into a fairly modularized design for a relayer. Um, but once that happens, then you have to think which protocols, i.e. am I transmitting bank packets or cross-chain validation packets, which channels am I going to set up channels between chains that I want to um, transfer across or relay across? And what, how much maintenance am I doing? How often am I submitting update clients, fees? There's a lot of user configurable input here. And I think as someone who's thinking about the user experience of folks like yourself using this in something like Game of Zones and, and then also during production on the main net, trying to hide some of those parameters that are maybe not as important for some use cases, i.e. if you're just simply relaying on a channel to ensure that there's a free flow of tokens between two chains, that's a relatively simple use case. If you wanna start relaying across multiple chains, ensuring that chains are connected, setting up connections and channels, that suddenly becomes a much larger design space. Um, so does that make sense, Mayor? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, I would uh, uh, second all of that and add that 
uh, the largest point of uncertainty for me in thinking about relayers is what the economic incentives will look like. And we've talked about those a lot on these calls, um, and there are a lot of interesting options. Some of the, the I took notes, others a document in the ICS repo under uh, ideation that talks about some of the discussions we had. Uh, I think like probably we're sort of speculated out at this point, and the best thing to do next is launch IBC and see what happens and see which experiments succeed and which experiments uh, need revision, uh, and, and we'll take it. Yeah, I yeah, I, th I think you're right on that. Like, we do kind of need to get this thing live and figure out how folks use it. So there's <laughs> some amount of this that's a little unavoidable. I mean, the good news is that the Relayer software implementation, which uh, Jack has been uh, leading, uh, will be modular so that different Relayers who want to do different things can import parts of it and reuse most of the code without hopefully too much trouble. Cool. Any other discussion topics this evening? The, these relayer implementations will be in, in Go or both Go and Rust? Yeah, the initial implementation is in Go. Um, and that's just because the tool chain that we have right now is much easier to work with in Go than it is in Rust. I don't. My understanding is Informal is working on a, a, a Rust implementation of the relayer. Um, and I see commits on it fairly regularly. So it's like moving Oh, on. where is that? I'd love to check that out. Uh, I think it's in the tender, it's like in Tendermint RS. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, I think they're mostly working on just white client stuff right now. Um, but because um, like Tony and I wrote signing and um, broadcast infrastructure for Rust in, um, that like does amino and all the other nonsense. Um, like it's not, there's like a whole bunch of infrastructure available for it. That's cool. I'll have to check that out. Cool. I actually didn't know that either, but uh, I mean, the, the main bit you need to implement a relayer is the light client. So if you have a light client, then you also need to be built into query tenement. So it's a fair bit of glue code. But. Is that in the, uh, ICF or the Tendermint repo? So I have like a meta question here. Um, uh, I'll, let me go find the, I think it's in the Tendermint repo on interchain.io, GitHub. Jack. Thank you. Um, the meta question I have is like, there are people who are working on IBC um, related stuff, like the informal people and uh, the Kadena people um, who are not here. And I'm wondering whether or not what we can do um, to more aggressive, like maybe we should all just, everyone who comes to this call should try to make it their personal mission to try and like reach out to the uh, informal folks and the Kadena folks and anyone else we know who's potentially working on this. Um, I also know that the near folks have like invested quite a bit in their like doom slug like client um, because they want to have an Ethereum bridge. Um, you know, so maybe trying to get some of them to show up here would might be interesting. I think we should just like maybe have an agenda item on this meeting that just is about evangelizing this meeting. Well, a way to do that would be to invite uh, them one at a time to present what they're doing to catch people up on it. Like I hadn't heard anything about the near stuff and it'd be nice to have a block allocated to discuss what it all might mean to the rest of IBC. Yeah, uh, a lot of structures are possible. I mean, one uh, sort of option is that we could uh, like have regular presentations and use this meeting or a successor to this meeting as a forum for those so that people who are working on projects which utilize IBC or will use, utilize IBC uh, or, or relevant um, can like present to a uh, you know, roughly continuous group of people periodically. And that might be a reason for them to show up instead of just show up and listen because the agendas are a bit ad hoc. Uh, to that point, if people would like there to be more specific kinds of meetings, like 
There could be a meeting for everyone who's implementing IPC in some fashion. It's periodic, a meeting for everyone who's planning on operating, like running a relayer. Uh, it's also periodic. It could be a meeting for discussing IBC applications. Uh, it's periodic. I am glad to set up, you know, coordination with Saki, et cetera, uh, whatever structure uh, would be most useful. And you know, we can evangelize it on the appropriate channels. Uh, the other thing that's maybe worth noting here for everyone is that there is a Discord channel. Uh, and assuming that works for people, we will continue it uh, uh, for IBC stuff. That's right. that and where it is. There is a Cosmos a Discord, um, uh, which is unofficial but uh, widely used, including by um, everyone who's working on IBC. Um, and there is both an IBC channel there, which is a public read and write, and an IBC core channel, which is a restricted write public read. And we will be using that to provide updates as well. We're trying to move, the current consensus right now is we're trying to move more IBC development to Discord, um, just in general. That's right. Uh, the GitHub discussions will continue unabated, but we're going to try to move some of what was on private or semi-private slacks to uh, the Discord. So expect more coming soon. Also, you know, if anyone's looking to get involved, and uh, do some work on IBC, you know, even if you're kind of just looking to get started and don't really know where to contribute, that's a great place to go ask. Um, and, you know, especially coming up here, we're going to have a lot of needs for testing and trying things out. I will be dropping early builds of the relay or an early demo there. So uh, come check that out. Yeah, contributions are most welcome. And hopefully switching to Discord will make it a little bit easier uh, because more of the day-to-day -day implementation coordination communication should be over. That may also be too much information. So feel free to join or leave or your channels. I think Discord has lots of notification control um, dials and knobs. You can twist and pull and tweak to make sure you see what you want to see. Yeah. The experiment having this IBC core channel is um, we've definitely, I think, all seen ex like situations where global read, global write channels sort of devolve into uh, various like off topic and sort of um, like, uh, like random side quests. Um, so the idea is like IBC is for the IBC channel is for that. And then the IBC core channel is basically like people who are actively like committing code or like act, have been part of the IBC project for a while or in other subways, active contributors can contribute there uh, and, and sort of hang out there um, and uh, sort of keep it on, on, on the day-to-day -day battle of trying to ship uh, IBC now. Uh, yeah, pursuant to that, um... I would also like to restructure these meetings a little bit, and I have not yet figured out uh, all of these details, but uh, we might be using, one, we might make the other meetings uh, at least public uh, attendee, uh, even if they're also restricted rights, so people can uh, see them and track them more easily, and two, we will have uh, a little bit better agenda management prior. There's a nice tool called HackMD, which has live editing for uh, markdown files on the web. I was considering that. Um, uh, we could also keep using GitHub issues. I'm pretty flexible. But. Or Google Docs, too, always an option. Right. I mean, the primary advantage of something that is not Google Docs is that it is easier to archive. Um, as in, we can, like, if we have the agenda as a markdown file, we can then commit that markdown file to GitHub straight after the meeting, and it serves as written record. It's harder with docs, so this is possible, I suppose. I do prefer Markdown, so yeah, tell you on that. Just cannot believe that Google Docs has not introduced Markdown support. It's been so long. They yeah. do have a third party plugin that you can install that does allow it to parse Markdown. It's kind of hacky and doesn't work great, but it exists. Yeah. I feel like the Google empire really is disintegrating. 
you know, slowly. Speaking uh, of side but, quests. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did I mean, I want the, to uh, the, uh, did, did we cover the game of zone state? Uh, Jack um, gave, gave a quick yeah. update. It's blocked on yeah. the demo mostly. Yeah, we're blocked on the demo at this point. There's the one true IBC tracking issue. If you would like to see progress on the demo, go check it out there. And as soon as we have some daylight on shipping that demo, i.e. we have a solid time frame, I will share it with everyone. And we will <laughs> do solid date on Game of Zones. And I'm sorry we haven't up until now. Yep. So uh, okay. Expect definitely uh, some more concrete updates by the next call. Yep. We're expecting to... Uh, wrap up our speed of progress shortly here. Thank you all I need to drop, but it was great. Thanks, Joe. Any other questions from folks? If you ever have requests for kinds of IBC organizational structure that should exist in the world that you want to be coordinated by somebody, open a GitHub issue about it. And people will read and people will consider and quite possibly enact your proposals. We are very open to this. Um, does the persistence team want to talk about their IBC work that they did over the last week? I saw some Twitter about it and didn't quite know exactly what was going on there. Uh, hi, Zach. Uh, this is Abhinav from Persistence. So what we did uh, in that Twitter account, in the, the tweet we showed, uh, it was a non-standard IBC transaction that we did in back in 2018 uh, based on version 24 of it. Of, of Cosmos SDK. It was basically trying to do a, a NFT tr transaction on two chains for the Comdex. So uh, yeah, so like I want to know like, what you'd like to know about that? Yeah, I mean, that this sounds great. Sorry, Chris, you go for it. Oh, I was just curious. Is this based on the old demo code that you were working with? Yeah, that, that was a very old code, version 24, version 24 Cosmos SDK. So right now we are like up trying to catch up with the current Cosmos SDK, IBC Alpha branch. We are keep trying to keep a close uh, track, and we are also trying to contribute uh, to the uh, IBC IBC Alpha. Um, just one quick note as to following IBC Alpha. Um, I, I am sorry, we're shipping significant breaking changes on there with no warning. Um, once we get the demo out, we should have kind of a stable release that uh, will be a little bit easier to pin on and won't be changing quite as much. Um, I think following that branch right now is maybe resource and time prohibitive. And, and you know, that's, that's up to you guys as to what you want to do there. But I mean, for me personally, working on the relayer that integrates all of these changes all the way up from Tendermint, the SDK, we get IBL stuff sometimes. Um, a bunch of my programming time is taken up updating dependencies. Like quite, quite frankly, that's like <laughs> been a huge time suck for me lately. And I understand how prohibitive and much of a pain in the neck that is for other folks doing it. So I would just note that we will have a stable version at some point here very soon. I am sorry that we don't right now, but uh, yeah. Following IBC Alpha is is a little tough at this point. Sure, sure. So right now, like uh, personally, I'm going through the, all the ICS, and if I'm try if I'm finding any mistakes, I've I've opened issues on GitHub on also of regarding the ICS. I think uh, Christopher goes re uh, review that. Yeah, hugely helpful. Thank you. Yes, yes, that, that's uh, very helpful. I mean, if you're just thinking about IBC, the right place to start to understand what it is is still the ICS repository. Uh, there's a folder called IBC, which has basically an architectural overview and goes over all the concepts you'll need to be reasoning about. Um, and then the individual ICS specifications describe exactly what the implementation needs to do and the implementation intends to implement all of those specifications. And if you find discrepancies in any of these things or uh, between them, uh, by all means, open issues on the appropriate repositories, and we will take a look. Sure. Cool. Anything else? Else we'll just end five minutes early. All right. Thanks, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your Thursday, wherever and whenever you are. 
see you in two weeks. Ciao. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. Talk soon. Bye.